Caregiving Exploratory Course for Grade 7 and 8. Caregiving Exploratory Course for Grade 7 and 8, Lesson 1.2. Our topic is Using Tools, Equipment, and Parapernalia in Caregiving. After knowing the tools, equipment, and parapernalia in caregiving, in this lesson, you will study how to use caregiving tools, equipment, and parapernalia properly. You will be able to use equipment, tools, and parapernalia that are used properly based on the task requirement. Now that you have successfully identified the different equipment, tools, and parapernalia used in providing healthcare, it is a must that you master the proper utilization of each. As an efficient and dependable caregiver, you must learn the procedures in operating them since you will be expected to use them in your particular job operating caregiving equipment tools and parapernalia blender a kitchen and laboratory appliance which is used to mix puree or emulsify food and other substances How to operate the blender? First, choose a flat, dry surface on which to operate your blender. Second, make sure that all parts are placed in their appropriate places before operating. Third, put the pitcher onto the base and plug the blender. Fourth, place the ingredients in the pitcher and put the lid on firmly. Fifth, start operating by choosing the setting appropriate for the task you are going to do. And number six, you may add food or ingredients through the secondary lid while the blender is running. First is the bottle sterilizer, an apparatus which is used in distracting microorganisms in containers like feeding bottle through boiling. Operating bottle sterilizer, number one, place the recommended amount of water as specified in manufacturer's instructional manual, then plug in the unit. Number two, place the bottle upside down. Place the nipples, nipple rings, and cups in such a way that they do not touch each other. Either prop them between the lower prongs or place them on a, the supplied surface. Number 3. Cover the sterilizer and turn on the unit. Sterilization typically takes about 10 minutes with an automatic cycle that raises water temperature to a sufficient level to kill off any bacteria. Once this cycle ends, the unit automatically begins to cool. Some models or units will not allow you to open the cover until the cooling cycle is completed. Number 4. Unplug the unit. Number 5. Remove the feeding bottles from the sterilizer. And number 6. Clean the sterilizer based on the manufacturer's specifications. Flat iron, an electric appliance which is used along with ironing board, to iron or press clothing or fabric. Operating flat iron. Number one, check the label of every garment before ironing. This is necessary as some fabrics need special care instructions. Number two, unfold your ironing board near the outlet. Plug in your iron and choose the appropriate setting based on the material of the clothes you are ironing. Number 3. Preheating the flat iron should be done before starting. You will have to wait about 2 to 5 minutes to let the iron warm up. Number 4. 
Number 4, stretch the garment across the ironing board to make sure it is flat. And number 5, run the iron over one part of the garment, such as the hem, just to be sure that it is not too hot. Number 6, move the iron over the pants, blouse, or shirt and take note of lids and pockets. For the shirts, start with the collar next to the sleeves and then the shirt itself. For pants and shorts, start with the inside then outside of the pants starting from the waistband down. Generally, skirt and dresses are ironed from the top to the hem. If there are pleats, iron from the bottom and work upward with fast strokes. Each pleat should be pressed individually. Hang each garment that you have ironed to keep it from wrinkling again. And number 7, unplug the iron and allow the unit to cool down before storing it. Washing Machine, an electric appliance which is used for washing clothes and linen. Operating Washing Machine, number 1. The very first step in washing is sorting the clothes of your client. Separate white and light colored from the dark colored clothes. Also, they should be sorted according to their material. Wash clothes with heavy fabrics together and clothes with light fabrics together. Number 2. Put the detergent into the washing machine. Let the detergent go to the bottom of the washing machine. Number 3. Put the clothes loosely into the washing machine. Number 4. Load the laundry as high as the manufacturer specifies or to the top row of holes in the tub. Number 5. Close the lid and choose the setting of the washing machine according to what you are washing. Number 6. Turn on the machine. Let the unit work through all the cycles. Wait for the machine to turn off before you unload the wash laundry. Number 7. Load the next batch of clothes and do steps 5 and 6 again until you are done with the laundry. And number 8. Turn off and unplug the unit. Common Equipment in Taking Vital Sign When caring for an infant, toddler, child, elderly, or person with special needs, measuring the vital sign is of utmost concern. This is also a concern of your clients. Hence, she has the right to know her vital signs. This lesson will walk you through the basics of taking two of important measurements. As you learn the different processes, you will also get your hands-on crucial pointers necessary in obtaining accurate reading. But first, let us talk about vital signs. Vital signs are bodily functions that reflect the body's state of health and are easily measurable, like body temperature, pulse rate, respiratory rate, and blood pressure. Taking body temperature using thermometer. Body temperature is a measurement of the amount of heat in the body. The balance between heat produced and heat loss is the body temperature. The normal adult body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. There is a normal range in which a person's body temperature may vary and still be considered normal. Take a look at these normal ranges of body temperature. Oral. 36.4 to 37.2 degrees Celsius. Rectal, 37 to 37.8 degrees Celsius. Axillaries, 35.9 to 36.7 degrees Celsius. Different types of thermometers. First is the clinical thermometer. It is used to measure human body temperature. Most made in the 20th century are mercury in glass thermometers. They are accurate and sensitive, having a narrow place where the mercury level rises very fast. A kink in the tube stops the mercury level from falling on its own. Next is the digital thermometer. 
are the temperature sensing instrument that are easily portable, having permanent probes and convenient digital display. The digital ear thermometer. It is also known as tympanic thermometers. Use an infrared ray to measure the temperature inside the ear canal when positioned properly. It is quick and generally comfortable for children and adults. Infrared thermometer. It is a thermometer which infers temperatures from a portion of the thermal radiation, sometimes called black body radiation, emitted by the object being measured. It is a non-contact thermometer to describe the device's ability to measure temperature from a distance. Rectal thermometer. It is taking person's temperature by inserting a thermometer into the rectum via the anus. It is often used sparingly and primarily on infants, children, or adults for whom taking an oral temperature would risk injury or be inaccurate. Using a digital thermometer. Number one, wash your hands and take thermometer from its holder. Number two, clean the probe or the pointed end of the thermometer with rubbing alcohol or soap and then rinse it in cool water. Number three, inform the client that you are going to take his temperature under the armpit. Number four, place the thermometer under the client's armpit. You may have to hold the thermometer especially if your client is very sick and weak and that he cannot even hold the thermometer with his armpit. Number 5. Leave the thermometer in place until the thermometer signals it is finished. When the thermometer beeps, it means that it can be removed. Number 6. Remove the thermometer carefully and read the temperature on the digital display. Clean the tip of the thermometer with a cotton ball soaked in alcohol. Put the thermometer's tip cover and place the thermometer in its container. And number 7, record the reading and wash your hands. Using BP apparatus, another important measurement that you should learn to take is the blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force of the blood pushing against the walls of the blood vessels. The heart contracts as it pumps the blood into the arteries. When the heart is contracting, the pressure is highest. This pressure is what we know as the systolic pressure. Now, as the heart relaxes between each contraction, the pressure decreases. When the heart is as its most relaxed state, the pressure is lowest, and we call this diastolic pressure. Using BP apparatus, the following steps will help you measure blood pressure accurately. First, wash your hands and prepare the equipment you will use. Second, introduce yourself and let the patient know the procedure to be done. Number three, sanitize the earpieces of the stethoscope with an antiseptic pad. Number four, ask your client to rest quietly. Have client down or sit on a chair, whichever is more comfortable for the client. Number five, if you are using a mercurial apparatus, the measuring scale should be within the level of your eyes. Number six, expose the arm of your client by rolling the sleeves up. Have your client's arm from the elbow down to rest fully extended on the bed or the arm of the chair. Number seven, unroll the cuff. Loosen the screw and squeeze the cuff with your hands to remove air completely. Number 8. Wrap the cuff around your client's arm above the elbow, not too tight or too loose. Number 9. Find your client's bronchial pulse at the inside of the elbow. Hold the diaphragm there and inflate the cup until the pulse disappears. Take note of the reading and immediately deflate the cuff. This is the client's approximate systolic reading and it is called the palpated systolic pressure. 
Number 10, place the stethoscope's earpieces into your ears and place the diaphragm on the bronchial pulse. Number 11, turn the screw to close it. Inflate the cup until the dial points to 30 mm above the palpated systolic pressure. Number 12, turn the screw to open it. Let the air escape slowly until the sound of the pulse comes back. Take note of the calibration that the pointer passes as you hear the first sound. This indicates the systolic pressure. Number 13, you have to continue releasing the air from the cuff. When you hear the sounds change to something softer and faster and disappear, take note of the calibration. This is now the diastolic pressure. Number 14, deflate the cuff completely. Remove it from the arm of your client and record the reading on the client's chart. And number 15, wipe the earpieces of the stethoscope with an antiseptic pad and place the equipment back to their proper place and wash your hands. A time to remember. This is Mylene Huliganga. Thank you for watching.